Good morning, folks. Since NASA rang the bell on 2013 A1 siding spring this morning, I suppose we'll go into damage control mode. For those channel vets who remember early last year when the comet ice on fear control campaign, we said that certain people were going to use that comet for fear, like every major comet that comes by. So now I'll tell you what we've been telling you since we discovered siding spring. There is no chance of it hitting Earth. This comet will come much closer to Mars than Ison did. The coma of the comet will likely engulf Mars and telescopes should be focused in mid-October for any electrical interactions. They currently expect the comet to miss the red planet by just over 80,000 miles, which means they've likely not messed up bad enough for an impact, but it is one of the greatest cometary events with a planet that we're going to encounter in our lifetimes. The only slight relevance to Earth, and it is a very slight one, would be if the comet does actually impact Mars, causing debris to scatter into near-Earth space. What's the theme here? It's a very interesting comet, and therefore almost certainly will be used for fear-mongering. Keep your head straight. Other story is a regional seismic uptick, the North Atlantic with multiple rumbles complementing the aftershocks in Greece, which refused to go away. You'll remember the top weather watch was for Australia. The northeast coast was expected to get a name within 48 hours. 28 hours later, it has been classified, and a Scotiamore strength will get at that name. The system is visible from the surface winds up through the highest cloud layers. Precipitable water shows that this system has major, major flood potential, but luckily is nowhere near the pressure strength of the Antarctic lows. Yet. Europe is easy. Still got rain south, snow north, a somewhat disorganized and confined system that will get interrupted soon by the next one crossing the Atlantic now. Now let's come to the Pacific. That big system of lows broke into smaller ones, but which maintained the northward flow of heat and moisture to Alaska, causing it to break heat records for this time of year, while the same system dumps snow all across the western U.S. and Canada today, and another system is breaking cold records in the east. That's some areas on the Gulf Coast, colder than areas in the Arctic Circle, north of Alaska. Yikes. Tell you what though, let that jet stream shift west about 400 miles and you've got the 2011 super knuckle storm after super knuckle storm shooting up the Mississippi and Ohio River valleys all over again. You all know what I'm talking about. Anyway, gamma signatures detected this morning out of Cetus on the celestial equator. Solar wind is showing speedy streams likely from one of the tiny coronal holes as the speed isn't that high and the disturbances registered are barely enough to get you out of bed in the morning. We did have one eruption last night unlike the others, unlike because of its position and filamentary genesis. It's not geo-effective at all but the bigger groups will be soon. The sun is napping as predicted in the evening news but we will get some back building later today, probably some more flaring. Looking at the sunspots, we haven't swooned over umbral development since the last time this active region showed herself. Can already pick out four Delta candidates and, if you look at the Doppler gram, there's no doubt we have meshing potential, possible central magnetic vorticity in the largest umbra. Folks, the solar conditions favor large flaring. This will be a good test of a major sunspot versus the underlying magnetic weakening of our star. Helio viewer is down, so stick to SDO Gong and the SXI. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.